Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. We're here at CES 2013, and I'm standing next to what very might be my next daily driver. This is the Xperia ZL, and it's got some really cool features to differentiate it from the Xperia Z. Let's check it out. Okay, so according to Sony, what makes this phone interesting, beyond a couple... All right, let me do that again. Now, there are a few ways that the Xperia ZL is different than the Xperia Z. First of all, it is not waterproof, and it also does not have a glass back, which I really like, because I don't like having a glass back. It makes it less durable. Uh, another, re another way that this is different is that the front-facing camera is on the bottom. What's up with that? A very interesting design element that really doesn't matter much. But the reason that they did that is because they maxed out the screen in the face of the phone, and Sony claims that it has the highest ratio of screen to phone, phone face. That's hard to say, but as you can see, the bezels are crazily thin. I feel, I, I know this sounds weird, I feel something when I look at this phone. It just is so futuristic looking. Uh, around the back we've got the same 13 megapixel camera. We've got a little butt flap here, uh, which has... Uh, butt this, flap, lovely name. Yes, butt flap. We've got the, the space for the, uh, this, uh, space for the micro SIM card and the micro SD card, which is great, expandable storage. Uh, now the battery on this is a little bit smaller uh, than the Xperia Z. The Xperia Z was 24 million, 2400 million hours. We really didn't mention that. So this is about 23 or 20, 2370 milliamp hours. And so everything else is the same here compared to the Xperia Z. We've got the 1080p screen, which is 1920 down by 1080 across. The same amount of pixels that's on the TV hanging in your living room, uh, most likely. It's got a 440 PPI, and I gotta say, the screen actually oddly looks better on this. And maybe it's just me, because I'm freaking out about this phone, uh, but it just seems to have better viewing angles and slightly better contrast. Now, another thing to notice here is that we get an LED notification. Look at it, it's, it's like this line. And maybe that changes to multiple colors, which would be really cool if you can use a program like Lightflow with it. Uh, so inside, we've got the same specs as the Xperia Z and the Optimus G and the Nexus 4, that awesome combination of the S4 Pro with two gigs of RAM, which means that this guy is fast. We don't have an internet connection, so we can't go crazy showing you stuff. Uh, we've got Android 4.1. We've got the Jelly Bean in the house. And let's jump into the camera, and you'll see what I mean. That the, the position of the uh, front-facing camera really doesn't matter, because look, you hold your hand here, you hold your hand here, and yeah, that might happen once in a while where your your hand's covering it up. Yeah. Say hi to everyone. Hi, hi, hi. And back to the front. And as we know from previous, oh, that's really cool. I was gonna say, as we know from previous Sony devices, Sony devices have an awesome, have very awesome cameras. Here's something that's really interesting, and oddly it's not doing it now. Let's go back into the camera app. Check this out. It takes up the entire frame, then we get these three dots, and if you tap the three dots, boom, that little guy pops out with those on-screen Android buttons. So this is the Xperia ZL. I'm really looking forward to it because, damn, look at it. A lot of screen on a phone. Kind of reminds us of the, uh, the Razer M a little bit. That's it for now.